Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm, uh, uh, thank you for uh, the introduction, and uh, I'm so glad to be here to be able to share with you the experience that we have um, been uh, seen in our development of a, a decentralized artificial intelligence platform uh, that is literally transforming healthcare as we speak. And uh, it is also very fortunate that we're able to combine the two most revolutionary technology of the 21st centuries in doing so. So let's go through that. And I'm sorry for the starting that's a little bit late there. I've literally just made it here from, um, from Boston with the, uh, the storm. So, um, okay, um, so healthcare, what are the problems? Let's just have a show of hands in our hall here. How many people are actually involved in healthcare in one way or another, or used to be in healthcare before you moved to blockchain? Not too many, not too many. Okay, all right, so let me just kind of run through it for you. The really three big healthcare problems, and um, these are, and I'll kind of like go through some of the interesting points. Human error. It is a, a kind of like small problem, but it is a very significant problem because the human error is actually the third leading cause of death in the US, just after cardiovascular disease and cancer. Now, the other part that you all probably know, even if you're not in healthcare, is that, you know, when you want to see a doctor, it took a long time. Long appointment, and, uh, and then you got a test, and it took a long time to get results. Why is that so? Not enough people working, you know, the personnel, the, the, the doctors, and the people in healthcare giving you that care. But the biggest problem in healthcare really is the high cost of healthcare. The cost of healthcare is actually above seven trillion already, and it is rising. It is literally unsustainable. So for whole, the whole of my life, I've been pretty much in healthcare, and I've always get asked by so many CEO, COO, CFO of many healthcare networks, hey Kim, how do we decrease the cost of healthcare? And I said, good question. I don't have a tool. So what happened is that we're so blessed to have such a revolutionary technology to work with, and not just one, but two. So I was going to start with the first one, and that's artificial intelligence. Now this may be something that some of you here are very familiar with already, so I'll go over very quickly. What happened was that literally in 2012, we, uh, uh, there was a, a, a kind of collection of more than a million images. They, they're all natural object images, and like dogs, cats, uh, trees, car, et cetera. And it's all from more than a hundred um, uh, or several hundred categories. And the challenge was that how do, you know, normally human would actually do the, the, the categorization, but how do we have software actually doing it? So to start up with, uh, let me just go back a little bit to tell you artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. It's actually been around even before I was born for that matter, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and it was actually over um, promising and under delivering. So many people actually got disappointed with it. But what happened in 2012 changed everything. And at the beginning, this graph show you that these are human programming artificial intelligence. Look at that. What happened, deep learning came into the picture and literally the performance just increased significantly, the error decreased significantly. The dotted line at the bottom are actually human. You and I, we kind of, are, if we have to categorize it, that's our performance. Take another look. That's what happened. So literally by 2016, um, the uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and uh, a, a, a branch of artificial intelligence called deep learning, machine learning, convolutional neural network, it actually able to perform this categorization and uh, recognizing uh, uh, objects way better than human for that matter. So that's when we from we he start hearing it um, on uh, business news everywhere. You see that uh, there's application of it in autonomous driving car, application of it in drones, in robotics, etc. Okay, so what happened um, to healthcare? Now this is one of the application 
artificial intelligence in radiology. The images that you're seeing here are CAT scan images of the head. And it actually has uh, this, uh, these images got bleed in the head. So the artificial intelligence actually able to detect the bleed, tells you where the bleed is, and it does it in fraction of a second compared to human. The comparison is obvious, and uh, all this is actually amazing uh, uh, value that, uh, th uh, that the uh, platform that we produce um, is able to actually um, provide uh, the environment for all this to actually happen. So now, I want to share with you one other thing about artificial intelligence, and that is these are what we also have been observing. Literally, you give it more data, it just keeps on getting better and better and better. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't complain, it doesn't take break, and literally, it doesn't make mistake twice. And I wish I could just say that for myself. So, so now, all the other areas of medicine, the artificial intelligence application has already been moving along. It's moving very strong, and you're talking pathology, cardiology, dermatology, ophthalmology, EMR, genetics, etc. And again, the platform allows all this to happen. Okay, moving on. Revolution um, number two. So. Just before I move on, again, I want to emphasize the artificial intelligence allows you to develop the software that actually perform tasks that used to be done by human, or it would aid the human to do so, and, and, and then improving the, the care, and decreasing the, the time it takes, decreasing the cost, and uh, better the efficiency. So now, revolutionary number two, and uh, this is all to do with blockchain technology. So, let me show you. What happened is that in the legacy environment, um, you know, you got all the, the way that business has been for the way that we know how business does is this, that literally you got, you got um, trust that is created uh, for the exchange of value. Uh, between uh, uh, between the, the company and uh, the customers. So uh, what happened is that all of that trust has been a centralized kind of, uh, in a centralized fashion. But all of that trust, because it is in the centralized fashion, it does have the centralized control. Now, with the new with the new approach and with blockchain technology, with, uh, with um, smart contract, you can decentralize all of that. You can disintermediate all the, the, all the intermediaries. And what am I talking about? You, talk, you, you got, you know, with the usual standard contract, you got uh, lawyers, you got accountants, you got bookkeepers, you got executives that actually take care of all of that. And sometimes if there's a disagreement, you then got the judges and the police involved in as well. But with blockchain technology, I'm sure you all are very aware of that. And, and that is, it is a, a software, it is an algorith algorithmic, uh, completely algorithmic, if you will. And um, because of that, the transaction can um, eliminate all of those intermediaries. And for the first time ever that literally we would have that trust that it can be created in a decentralized org organization um, for us to use. So, okay. So this is our environment here, and this is what we actually um, have been working with. So the environment is really a decentralized environment. Again, one more time, it's open source, it's inclusive of the community and the community govern governance. Privacy is preserved, and 10% of the services provided would be given to um, other healthcare um, networks that are in need. Again, voted by the community, also 10% actually um, given to the new development, again voted by the community, is tokenized economics, and uh, our mission is literally to create an open platform and given the tool so that uh, we can have the development of artificial intelligence that would actually decrease the cost of healthcare and would democrat um, uh, that, and it would dramatically lower the cost of healthcare, improving the quality of care um, and services for all. So a little bit about my journey. I literally have been in healthcare for more than 25 years, and 
I have been working in multiple projects that literally impact healthcare, one of which actually IPO'd as, um, on the NASDAQ. And, um, and beforehand, I was actually a Vietnam War refugee, floated at sea, no food, no water for more than half a month. No, no, no parents, for that matter. I was actually then rescued and brought to Australia, and that's where I started school again at 14, and then at 18, I entered medical school, and then at 23, finished medical school with honors. And then the US actually got me here under a thing called Scientists of Extraordinary Ability. So literally from that point forward, I have been dedicated every single minute of my life to better healthcare. That's my mission, that's my passion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, and I've been so much wanting to better our healthcare. We all know healthcare is so complex and so difficult to improve. Even just decreasing the cost of healthcare by 5% or 10% in any organization, in any hospital, that's, that's like very difficult if anybody in healthcare would know what I'm talking about. And DMED.ai is my current project and I'm here to make it work. I'm here to set the cornerstone so that we can better healthcare with the two most revolutionary technologies of the 21st century, and that is artificial intelligence and blockchain technology. Let me move on and tell you a little bit more. Who's in our community? We got literally experts in healthcare, expert in deep learning, artificial intelligence, and we got specialists in uh, blockchain technologies. And we got you. I want you all to know that each and every one of you here can truly participate, and I'm gonna tell you how in a little bit, okay? And if you don't care about healthcare too much, it's okay. Go and tell your friends and your families and whoever who care about healthcare because it's going to impact each and every one of us as we move forward, okay? Now, so uh, literally, I kind of touched on that a little bit already, that in our new environment, we literally have blockchain, we have smart contract, we tokenize it, and all the, all the issues that we have to deal with the other a legacy environment, we don't have that in this environment and using our platform. So here's what the differences between the trust in the centralized format and in the decentralized format. Let me just compare for you how things work with the, the centralized and the decentralized. And as you could see, with the, this is GPU usage. And just for that, um, so that you know, we use exactly the same GPU that any one of you, if you're miners and, and you use um, GPUs for mining, it's exactly the same. But guess what? This is how you could participate. You actually, I think the com, you know, from, from our calculation, the compensation is actually more, and you participate to better healthcare. If I cannot convince you doing that, I don't know what else I'm gonna do, okay. Now, here's another one, centralized versus decentralization organization. It's kind of like not healthcare, but I just want to give a bit of historical um, uh, um, interest here and, and, and how it actually works. So what happened is in the, you know, like back in those time where music was actually concentrated in the hands of literally a few companies and the control was about like, I think 15 billion or so. When decentralization came along, Literally within 10 years, you saw it drop down to 6 billion. How did that happen? It is because you disintermediate all the, the intermediaries and lowering the cost and have the community involved. So I want to kind of like emphasize again, with the community involvement, you literally can make it happen. Okay, now another one, centralization versus decentralization. And you could see right here that um, in the recent years with all the, uh, uh, all the funding support for new uh, startup projects, and there are more funding coming from ICO versus uh, the conventional VCs. And the conventional VC used to make money uh, out of a few unicorns, literally. And the unicorns are, are what, what really kind of keep them going and, and give them the profit, right? But these days, unicorns 
pretty much just go to ICO. And they go to ICO, they get the funding from the ICO, and they can actually branch out there and support the community as well. And, and then you can see that you know, you don't have to be in California, even though the, the conference in California, my apology, but you don't have to be in California, you can be anywhere in the world if you have a great cool idea. You can actually get funding from ICO and you can really make a difference to the world. Now, let's go back to healthcare. So this is what's going on with healthcare. And if it doesn't bother anyone in this room, you really want to pay attention. Literally, healthcare cost is going up so much that it is unsustainable. And this is not just the US, but everywhere else in the world. And we believe that decentralization for this industry would need to happen and it need to happen ASAP for, for it to be sustainable, for it to be able to provide the care that we all will need going forward. Okay, so this is the future. We believe that the future of effective medical care is in decentralization. That is our passion. That is the story of DMED.AI platform. And that is what we are trying to build so that we can better healthcare, decreasing the cost and make healthcare available for all. So I don't know the timing that I have. I got like 13 minutes. I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was rushing through quite a fair bit here. So I can share with you that if you love what I got to say, then please join our community and please join us on our journey to change the world. Thank you. And I got a lot of time, so yeah, please, by all means, whatever I can do to answer. And I will also recognize that this is very brief overview. It is just our experience. There's a lot more to talk about. You know, you can talk about all sorts of different things, what the platform does, how does, how does it do it, and also token economics, et cetera, et cetera. I will be more than happy to see any one of you at the booth and discuss all of that. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I had a question on what you were just saying. So first of all, thank you for the session. Really thank helpful. You. Healthcare is clearly a huge, huge, biggest problem. Um, the question is, which element of healthcare are you trying to change or impact with the, with the DMAT.AI? Yep. And like you just said yourself, how would it work yep. versus so, how it works today? Okay, good, good question. Um, I'm actually a neuroradiologist, and uh, my last post uh, uh, in the, here was at UCSF, by the way. I love UCSF a lot. I love San Francisco. Um, and so what happened was for literally many years of my life, I was very much into medical imaging. So when we first uh, found out that hey, um, AI could actually perform complex visual recognition, um, I started out looking at how that it would uh, perform with radiology, the medical images. And we actually were able to produce the products that uh, allows for completely autonomous radiology scan interpretation system. And on the platform, um, we able to actually apply radiology, cardiology, pathology, dermatology, ophthalmology, genetics, as well as um, EMR. Okay, now, um, for, so how does it all work? The, uh, I actually left that out because I wasn't sure if I would have enough time, but the platform itself allows you quite a few functions and a few features of the platforms. Um, what are those features? First of all, in artificial intelligence development, uh, you know that number one, you need a team team of really smart computer science, PhD people to really do the work. Then in addition to that, it actually the most significant factor is really the data. You need a lot of data. You need, you need uh, data to teach the neural network. To kind of like make it simple for, for a lot of you here, if I looked at, say, sir, I look at you like that, I hope that I would be able to remember you, just one look at you. But the network doesn't learn that way. It learns by looking at you like this, 
to from the right, from the left, from top down, bottom up, with this shade of light, that shade of light, it needs a lot of data. And that happens in literally every uh, area that artificial intelligence applies. So what happened is that why the, the DMED platform? Um, I can tell you that the current problem is that you've got engineers who are working either in small companies, big company, legacy technology companies like Google, like Amazon, like IBM, and they're there. So you got the engineers. Most of the engineers are not employed by hospitals, okay? And hospital and healthcare networks, they actually are, they, they, uh, they have silos of data, and they cannot really give away the data, sell the data, because that's you know, a lot of, uh, of issues with that, which I can go into. So what happened is that there's just the, the disconnection. You got engineers sitting here, you got data sitting here, siloed in so many different healthcare networks. And let me just kind of give another example. I'm a doctor. I've learned medicine because I read more than one textbook, okay? So if I just only able to read one textbook, I'm not as good a doctor as being able to read textbook from somebody written the textbook who came from MD Anderson or, or Mayo Clinic or Yale or Cornell, et cetera, et cetera. So for the um, neural network, it's the same thing. So if you only got so much data and the data is kind of like separated like that, you're never going to have the best neural networks that would do the best thing for, for, uh, for our uh, healthcare system. So I struggled with that for a long time. You know, over the years, I looked at that and I thought, this got to be resolved. This cannot go on, okay? And so luckily, blockchain technology came along. It's not AI, it's blockchain technology that's unable us to do that. And literally on our platform, through smart contract, through the way that we set up, that different institutions and even each and every one of you, if you got your own medical data that you actually would like to share, um, and we use the word rent, actually. I mean, we come up with that word, that term, because what? You're not sharing any, you're not giving your data away. You're, um, everything is properly HIPAA protected. And guess what? If you share that, if you rent that data to, for one time, and next time you said, no, I don't want to do that, you're totally entitled not to have to do anything like that. You don't lose your data. Nobody's able to copy your data. And that's what the platform is able to do as far as data um, sharing, if you will, is concerned. Then the platform also does a few other things. What else does it do? The data has to be properly organized. It has to be labeled. Good data in, good data out. Bad data in, sorry, good data in, good result coming out. Bad data in, garbage out. So you have to have good data and you have to label the data. It's called curation. And the platform allows that interaction of curation between the people who have the data and the people who can perform the curation at economies of scale. So that's number two. Then number three, you got the AI developers. And these are the engineers who want to develop the, the, the software. So you got the, the we call them D min minors and then P minors. And I go into all of those things for you. With, if I have time, come to the booth and I'll go through that for you. But basically, the D minors and the P minors, they're able to interact. They're able to get the data. They're able to make challenges and requesting all of these, uh, uh, all of these uh, uh, tasks. And it actually is through the smart contract that, uh, that we, um, we enable that. Now, and then the last thing is really the exchange. Once you got all your software produced and then you want to exchange that, you want to sell that, the platform also allows you to do that. All those things that I'm telling you is not conceptual. We actually operate, uh, we, it's operational. And we have that in the centralized um, fashion right now and we're beginning to decentralizing it starting with the exchange. So hopefully I answered your question. It's a long answer right there. 
Uh, Dr. Nguyen, thanks for the presentation. Thank I you. think that when you talk about healthcare and solving problems, like lowering the cost of healthcare is a lofty goal. But you've got a few layers. You've got the uh, geographic layers. It's not the same thing to be talking about public-private uh, healthcare, talking about the U.S. healthcare and China health healthcare, for example. Okay. So you're talking about a decentralized world, but there is a lot of regulations that come into play. The second thing is, what are the incentives for the different stakeholders? So my question for you, and I know that this will require longer uh, explanations, but I'd like to understand how is that DM DMED, that AI, going to address the interoperability in the healthcare which is a uh, market, which is a big issue, and what are the incentives for the different stakeholders that you're going to offer so that they're going to be sharing information, even if it is using the uh, blockchain and that that information is used only once, uh, but that information is not necessarily owned by the patients, that information is owned by the institutions. Yep. So. I can share with you, and uh, this is something of a bit of the technology that, that you got to see it. But uh, when, you, when the, um, the information is exchanged, we actually have a module sitting there on the network that would not allow any scene of any of such information or any copying of any of such information uh, whatsoever. So that's just like we, we literally solve that problem. It is a problem that people have not been able to solve, but we solved it. And so that's answering your, your first question. Uh, your second question is, is actually another, um, your, the second part of your question uh, is uh, really to do with you know, how you deal with the US and how you deal with China and all of that. Um, for this part, um, you, in, in, your, in the development of the products, if you develop a product and you want to sell that product, you've got regulatory people come into the picture. However, if you develop the product and you use that product yourself, um, regulatory don't even come into the picure. Like for example, if I'm at UCSF and I develop the product and I use it right at UCSF, I use it for myself, um, on my, you know, on, on my clinical work, um, regulatory actually don't, don't come into the picture. And the regulatory part is such a, you know, it, it is a huge challenge um, because some of the people in regulatory, they not quite there with the technologies for that matter. And I should not be saying this because I'm saying it publicly and uh, it's kind of like one of those things, but truly the industry is, you know, and the technologies are moving so, so fast. And the regulatory people, as you know, and, and including financial for that matter, they catching up, they have kind of like gone, hey, what are we going to do with this? So it's the same thing in healthcare. And so regulatory is looking at that. But if on the platform, and if you are, say, if you're from Hospital X and you got your data, you want to learn to how to develop the, the AI um, products so that you can utilize it for your own institution. And then you want to reach out to other people with data so that you can better that process. You can definitely do that with the platform. And the interaction is very fair and in a trusted way because what we thought of is there's different ways of actually doing it, but we thought of one of the ways of doing that, and we have op already been applying that, is that when you develop um, AI, there is an ROC curve of your performance. And if you interact with another database, if that database is a good database and improving your ROC curve, then payment would happen. If it doesn't improve your, your ROC curve, then according to whatever the smart contract that you have, you may not need to pay at all. So it is a fair exchange and trusting environment for everybody to really jump on and work in AI for healthcare. Hello. Um, so in the, in the United States, in order to practice medicine, you have to actually be registered in the state that you're practicing and you Correct. can't cross state boundaries. Um, so how does this happen when essentially healthcare is being provided from a decentralized network that could be anywhere in the world? Um, 
Yes, 30 seconds. Uh, I think I, I can um, speak with you a little bit more. That actually doesn't apply. Um, I've been in telemedicine and teleradiology. Uh, as a matter of fact, I commercialize teleradiology for that matter. Um, and uh, that is a totally different, uh, uh, different service to this. Uh, in, in a nutshell. I can talk to you a little bit more about that. It's got nothing to do with state licensing, et cetera.